It was June of last year, the state Supreme Court ruled that Washington's legislature had finally fulfilled its duty to properly fund basic education. At last, the 11-year legal fight known as McCleary was over. McCleary was the family that originally sued, saying the way schools were funded favored kids from rich school districts. But within just a few months of the McCleary victory lap, school districts started warning about needing to make cuts. They used to be able to spend $4,000 per student raised through local levies. That goes down under the new law to $2,500. Most of our public knows about McCleary and knows that the McCleary funding came in and they think the problem's over. McCleary, they said, was a bait and switch. And taxpayers like me were left wondering, is school funding just a modern version of the money pit? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to laugh to keep from crying. But seriously, how did we get here? The fix did send more money from the state to local districts. A lot more, $2 billion initially. That money was paid for by a statewide property tax increase. Yep, higher taxes. Spreading the responsibility for school funding to all property owners, not just the ones who live in a specific city. But as part of this fix, the legislature put a cap on how much each city could raise from its own property owners. Think of it like a swap, less a city burden and more of a state responsibility. The cap on local levies was a big deal. Take the Kent School District. It saw a 47% reduction in what it could raise from local levies. Seattle, a 45% reduction. And in Bellevue, a 25% decrease. Now you may be saying, yeah, that's significant, but the state was supposed to make up for the loss of that local money. That's true. But remember those teacher strikes last fall? How many of you have your classrooms completely set up and ready to go for tomorrow? <laughs> Washington had the most teacher strikes since 1983, almost 40 years ago. The reason is because last summer, most school districts were momentarily flush with money. They got their first installments from the state, and they were still collecting high local property taxes. Everyone started clamoring for those dollars. Schools wanted to invest in new buildings and technology. Most importantly, teachers wanted pay raises to make up for years of little to no increases from the state level. Financially prosperous districts were more easily able to give double digit raises, putting pressure on poorer districts to do the same or risk losing teachers. Yes, uh, teachers need raises. If I live in Edmonds, you live in Seattle, and you see that Edmonds just gave their teachers double-digit raises and you want to keep your teachers, what are you going to do? Now that we have this new cap on levies that the state passed as part of that McCleary solution, the pie is smaller. And if you give a lot of the money that you've gotten from the state to teacher salaries, it doesn't leave much. Eric Corman with the nonprofit League of Education Voters says, while giving teachers double digit raises was partly responsible for the budget deficit, there are still other factors at play. For example, the definition of basic education. Why is that important? Well, McCleary was about getting the state to fully fund basic education. And according to the Supreme Court, they did that. But basic, according to the state, is different than what plays out in the real world. 100 more or 200 more? Here at Horizon Elementary School in Kent, nearly half the students are on free and reduced lunch. Some have special needs. Then they grab a sensory, uh, a weighted ball, and then they go through the infinity loop, which means they can go around as many times as they want with that weighted ball. What we're running into, the chronic need for supports with students with significant emotional um, behavioral challenges, it, it's become very extreme, not just meeting basic education in terms of being able to educate, that means provide academics, but also to, to get kids so they're able to be up to speed to learn in the first place. So basic education to the state might mean one school counselor, when the reality is a school may need two. With the legislature recently deciding to lift the levy cap, various cities can solve for this. But what you get will depend on your district, and more than likely, higher poverty cities will pay higher rates. So folks, there's your McCleary fix. The legislature's response to a lawsuit designed to level the playing field between rich school districts and poor ones wound up creating a different flavor of the same pie, an education funding formula where poor schools may be disadvantaged again. And what this means for you is you'll get to keep that higher state property tax and you may or may not get the relief at the local level. Look, I don't have a problem with paying more for education, 
but fixing a problem that created another problem that you then had to fix, and then that fix creates the problem you were trying to solve in the first place, feels like absolute nonsense. And anyone who says they didn't see this coming is disingenuous at best.